Davis, and he calls himself Mike in his stories. And I really, I always have to become my narrator, or my main character when I'm writing. And I went so deep with Tim that I was worried about coming out for a little bit. Uh, the stories, stories are very short, but since I had to know all of his background and everything about him while writing these stories, because it, they're memories of his childhood or his teen years or what he's thinking right now. I and mean, at the time he's writing these stories, he's a, about a 28-year-old bartender in a small tavern in a small northeastern Oklahoma town. And I would be thinking about what was going on in the bar that night because um, what goes on in the bar sometimes triggers his, his memories. And he's actually writing these stories to, because he's got a crush and he's a creative writing teacher at the community college, and there's a little story in there that explains that. But um, I think he's sitting around the house and thinking about what was going on in the bar. Because I do a lot of thinking. I do much more thinking than I books than I do writing the actual books, and these especially. But my husband would come home and say, this is what's happening in the bar, and he caught this guy trying to get a word for him. Took him out and beat the crap out of him in the parking lot. <laughs> and my husband looked at me one night and he says, Honey, you're starting to sound like you. <laughs> <laughs> the deal with, or not many, maybe all, deal with um, boys who have really gotten into big, big trouble. Yes. And, um, and you take up the issue very straightforwardly um, can these boys change? Um, or are they stuck being who they are and having to pay for um, either who they are or what they've done? And are those two things the same? Well, in my book, Pex, uh, you know, Trevor Boys again, but I think I made it kind of clear that even though there's people who go and live out of their town, there are people who stay where they are and they're still as valuable mm -hmm. where they are. So, like, uh, I think Mike has learned a lot about his own life and his own motives, and he's pretty upfront about his own shortcomings, too. He's got an alcohol problem. He, he knows he has trouble with authority figures. Uh, but self-realization, it can help you get your act together a lot. I think Mary Jane goes to the prom with the football yeah. hero, and that was the big plot. And she ends up at the quiet boy next door, and she had a good time, just like Mom said. I went to a few proms, and the big plot was who got killed in the parking lot. And the subplot was, you know, got the booze inside. So <laughs> I just wanted to write something, to read it, actually, to, to dealt realistically with uh, what I was saw going on in my high school. Well, I was so oblivious that I didn't know that was going on in my high school. <laughs> I recently uh, got in touch with my former, my stepbrother was born in 1946. I didn't even notice that, know that that was going on in my house. And that it was. He was climbing out the window every night. I wonder why he was always so sleepy in the park. <laughs> but I should have, I should have noted the duck tail with sociological interests rather than purely admiration. Well, I grew up in a greaser neighborhood, and to me, my friends just dressed the way they were, which way, the way, and so the people I grew up with, I was walking down the street one day with them, and someone drives by, and they'll crease her, and I'm thought, what's their problem with it? And then I take, you know, kind of old holy wise, and I think, oh my God, they look like hoodlums. So now I know they weren't yeah. hoodlums, but that was, that was the uh, impression that probably did. Most of my friends were guys, and I was doing stuff like duck hunting and playing football and stuff. And I was running around with a group of friends who were something like the ones in the Outsiders, and I just thought if I wrote this, and said a girl was doing it, nobody would believe it. But honestly, I didn't identify the female culture at the time. It was very confined, very confined. What girls got to do was stand in the jar and write their hair outline their eyes in black, which is interesting, you know, for five minutes, but all their problems. <laughs> so I, I li just literally thought I didn't think like a girl. But now that I'm married, believe me, I know what <laughs> men really think like. <laughs> they just absolutely are kind of refrigerator blind. And you go to the door and they're going, where's the meal? <laughs> I'm 
I can't find something. They're not happy unless I get up and look for it. I've heard a story over the years that if I would just get up, they can find it. <laughs> but I find it easier to um, write from a male point of view, and I'm all about easy. So I, and I know I'm convinced that I've gotten better and better. As a matter of fact, I don't know how I wrote Tim stories here, the most masculine things I've ever read in such classes, because I was on like a college track thing. A friend of mine got beaten up on his way home from school, and I got mad about it. And I was writing all the time. I'd started writing in grade school, but I began at what I thought was just going to be another short story about a kid who was beaten up on his way home from the movies. And it turned out to be the beginning of The Outsiders. It's 40 pages long, single space typed when I got through with it. And I was 15 when I got that first draft done, but I was 16 in the year. The publishers actually saw uh, my third draft. And when I was in school, I, you know, I saw that Robert Frost poem, and I thought, wow, that's what I'm trying to say in the book. I couldn't tell you why I thought it was what I was trying to say in the book. So I'd go home and write it in the book. I'd go to school and say, I'm writing a book. This is what happened, what should happen next? My friends would say, oh, why don't you make the church burn down? I thought, oh, great, I thought. <laughs> so I was just putting a little bit of everything into it. And for all you kids out there, um, I made a dean pretty for I didn't hear. So I'm not going to tell you you can't write it. But it's felt it. And I want to feel productive like anybody else. And for a long, you know, and if I go for a long time, and I have gone for a long time, periods of time where I'm not really writing anything. You know what I do lately? It's just like, embarrassed to say this. But sometimes I'm really stuck, and I, I kind of like to be writing because it really, I got into it because it's fun. I lost that feeling for a long time because it was my job. In Hawks Harbor, I got back into the fun part of it again. Sometimes I write fan fiction. But you know what fan fiction is? You go to fanfiction.net, go to The Outsiders, and there's like 4,000 Tony Boy Has His Sister stories. <laughs> or this girl tames Dallas stories. It's a lot of kids write it. And if you find a few good ones, they're mine. <laughs> Educator, anybody who's working with kids, I'm the one that know. I'm the one that should be thanking you because you're doing a job I can't do. I got my degree in education. I found out real fast I don't have the balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a pretty tough cookie. But I, I couldn't do it. And as a citizen, I thank you because you're like the lad of the front wall against the boards of barbarians. <laughs> but you know, as a writer, I thank you because you're the best day of advertising anybody's ever had.